If you get hit by a car and you land on your head and you're not wearing a helmet, you can get anything from a goose egg to a concussion or you can die. I'm Isis Schiffer. I'm an industrial designer. I run a consultancy called Spitfire Industry. She's really motivated by seeing opportunities to make things better. Traditional bike helmets are quite expensive. They don't biodegrade and they don't recycle. They just sit for 10,000 years. And they're big, they're bulky. You don't want to carry them around. So trying to hit all of those three problems was sort of the starting goal. Because once you have the problem, then you know what to do. Eco Helmet is a recyclable, foldable bike helmet uh, specifically directed at bike share users. What makes the helmet work is that the honeycomb pattern addresses the head perpendicular from all angles, so it will absorb a blow no matter where it comes from. Eco Helmet hits a lot of things that I love, which is bikes, sustainability, weird materials, and functionality. I'm really big into cycling, and I think bike share is really great. But I do see a lot of people being scared to ride. Having easy access to bikes is great, but not having easy access to helmets seemed like a big gap. This is the most important part to me. I think that cities are best experienced either on foot or on a bike. She was great at attacking, coming up with a solution, and then being able to back up and say, not quite, and then try it again, and again, and again, until it gets to where it needs to be. Eco Helmet was concepted about three years ago. Well, the design, it was sort of a burst project when I was studying in London. It takes enormous commitment. Everybody thinks that it just dumps out of your head, finished. And it, I don't think it's happened for anybody that way. The hand prototypes that I made were probably like mm, six to eight different iterations before I nailed something that I thought was worthwhile. The factory iterations is maybe another dozen. And I was able to crash test it and get a sense that the material was sound. Since then, it's been trying to figure out how to make it in a sustainable manner that isn't ridiculously expensive and also works. The James Dyson Award is the design award that everybody wants to win. Everybody enters it. That and this one's no strings, it's just solve a problem and show it to us, which is really nice. It is an amazing platform, I'd say maybe more of a catapult. It recognizes your idea. Getting the recognition from this award opened a lot of doors for me. It promotes your idea. Let me get an office, let me hire people, let me take this a little bit more seriously. Because then your phone starts ringing. But it's always amazing to think that somebody else sees what at that time was a student product. It was developed but not finished and thinks that it's worthwhile and that was very, very validating. I, I want to make things that A, make the world more beautiful and B, solve actual problems. And it is important too to step back and just be like, wow, I'm making things that go into the world and give people pleasure or health benefits or ease of life. And that's a nice feeling and, and being able to sort of keep on top of that is important. Hi, I'm Steve from Easy Trail, and I'd like to introduce you to the very latest of our models, the Albany Z. The Albany Z is a lightweight rear fold camper designed to be towed by smaller SUVs and four wheel drives. But just because it's lightweight, don't believe for a second that it packs any less of a punch off road than the bigger models, even though it weighs in at just over 1100 kilos. Designed with strength in mind, the Albany Z features a 100 by 50 millimeter by four millimeter thick hot dip galvanized drawbar and chassis, made from Q345 grade steel. All this rides on the proven reliability of the Easy Trail independent suspension system with trailing arms, coil springs and shock absorbers. Off-road 15 inch wheels and tires paired with 320 millimeters of ground clearance means this trailer will follow you wherever your adventure takes you. On the exterior, the Albany Z has a convenient built-in rack with adjustable support legs for when you set up the camper. Alongside the rack, there are alloy storage boxes which carry your poles. These are positioned here to keep weight centered above the axles for a better balanced camper. And at the back, we have a swing away spare wheel carrier with fully submersible LED lights for when the going gets tough. 
The front of the camper hasn't missed out on its share of features either, with an extra large fridge box and handy rack on top of the front storage box, which are all covered by the annex and awning when set up. The Albany Z has the proven off-road polyblock hitch, an Anderson plug connection for charging the 100 amp hour battery while you drive, and a hand winch that makes opening and closing the camper a breeze. One of the great things about this camper is how easy it is to set up. It can be done in next to no time with just one person. However, as always, it helps to have another person to give you a hand. Let's take a look inside the camper and see what makes it such a comfortable home away from home. The Albany Z comes with an 80mm foam mattress for extra comfort and convenient storage drawer underneath for your gear. The windows can be zipped up from the inside in case of bad weather or for privacy at bedtime and there's a handy step that makes jumping into bed easy for both young and old. LED lighting comes as standard in the Albany Z as does midgy proof mesh on all windows and doors. The spacious annex can be completely enclosed for extra living and sleeping space or used as an awning to keep you out of the sun and protected from the rain. Last but definitely not least is the much loved Easy Trail kitchen with a four burner gas stove that has burners that throw a great amount of heat so you can cook steaks properly and boil water quick. Alongside is a sink which is plumbed to the 80 litre water tank via an electric pump and handy slide out drawers for storing your kitchen utensils. It also has a very handy dish rack and when the cooking is done, it slides away neatly to give you room to relax. The Albany Z is a great little camper. It's so easy to tow and it's so comfortable to holiday in. For more information, head over to easytrailcampertrailers.com.au. Today, we talk to Roland, who shows us his folding catamaran dinghy, the Aquanaut. Man, I got a big dinghy, all I ever do is smile. Lord, I got a big dinghy, all I ever do is smile. Man who's got a big dinghy can go the extra mile. You know what I'm talking about. My name is Roland, Roland Hersink. And uh, we spent about four to six months uh, per year on a sailing vessel. We have a 40 foot sailboat and uh, we basically cruise up and down the coast and Florida and Bahamas with uh, Turks and Caicos, maybe Dominican on the schedule for next year. Cool. So uh, you're a voyager then? I guess you could call me a, a wannabe voyager or an almost voyager. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> You have a very interesting dinghy. Let's start out with how people can find information about it. Well, Let's first, my camera here. So yeah, I'm the first thing is that just so we got a website right here, Aquanaut Boats. So this is the Aquanaut, and uh, AquanautBoats.com is our website. That'd be the best place to get more information. It's got pictures. It's soon to have some videos and links, uh, prices, specifications, etc. Everything they need to know. Well, you've got the most unique dinghy that we've filmed. Well, second most, but that was a homemade, very weird thing. <laughs> Why don't you uh, tell us all about this uh, dinghy? Okay. Um, well, first of all, uh, let me give you a little background, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I used to own, uh, when we got into sailing about six or seven years ago, I had a sailboat. I didn't want to re destroy the lines of the boat with an arch and all the luggage on the back. So I wanted to find a, a, a dinghy that we could use and take with us that was transportable. Uh, as well as being stable and dry. So we ended up with a porta boat. We used that for a number of years. Uh, the other, it worked fine. It had two slight distractions. One is the bow is very low, so you can get swamped quite easily. Um, uh, the second is uh, I wanted to use an electric motor as I'm using here. And uh, the Torquedo uh, will take us about a mile, a mile and a half at any decent speed in the porta boat. For me, that was uh, not good so it wasn't good enough I, I the, if it's a good boat maybe but it wasn't a good boat for me and electric being the wave of the future i want to be part of the clean movement and uh, sailors of course we're not burning our fuel anyway so the electric motor fits in really well uh, on that basis i wanted to redesign a boat for myself i tried a, a catamaran dinghy an inflatable uh, i've owned one of those for a few years uh, that works okay a little bit better than the port boat but you're still pushing water with an electric motor 
And if we're going to go any distance with an electric motor, we can't, we're not going to be planing anyway with an electric. So we need to be able to slice through the water. And that's where I came up with this design here. When I designed it, I wanted a design for stability uh, on the water and uh, keeping people dry. So, you know, when you have an inflatable, you're sitting on the side of the boat, any kind of wave, the butt, you're going to get wet butt. Uh, you see ladies are all dressed up in their raincoats, etc. That's really no way to go through the water. <laughs> it's, it's nice, but it's, uh, it's not the best way. So uh, the first thing I want is stability, a stable and dry boat. This boat here, natural seating position, very stable. I can sit in any one of these seats. Four people can have their own seat. Uh, I can lay down on the bench. Uh, I take the bench out, take it to the beach, uh, lay on it and not get in the sand, whatever I might want to do. So very stable and very dry. And so that meets the first requirement. The second requirement, was that it's going to be good with electric. So because of the hull shape, we're not planing, we're like a pair of skates going through the water. It's very easy to push through the water. And you saw me rowing, very easy to row, goes very straight. So with an electric, this is a 1000 watt motor. And if, I've got, if I use 300 watts and have four people in the boat, I'm going three and a half knots. That is unheard of. That's completely unheard of. What's your range when you do that? Uh, I can do five, I can, at that speed, I can do about four or five knots range, nautical, oh, nautical miles. Nautical miles. Four or five nautical miles over okay. an hour, yeah. And so I've got an extra battery. I usually carry two batteries, so I can do almost 10 miles on my boat. Okay. At three and a half knots. Yeah, I, with, I, whether I have you motoring with the electric, and you're like twice as fast as a portaboat with the same motor. Yeah, I used to have this on my portaboat, and uh, I was in Key West, which is one of my motivating factors. Key West, the mooring field, is about a mile, over a mile from the dock. And to take this motor with my portaboat boat or with any kind of inflatable dinghy to the dock, I get to the dock and I'm almost out of juice. And now I can go uh, across the bay in Georgetown. I can go to Key West dock and back uh, four trips before I'm out of juice. Yeah, I think you have the boat here that makes this little electric motor actually practical. Uh, exactly right. Mm -hmm. So that's the second uh, feature of the boat. The third is versatile. You know, I've got folding bicycles I need to carry. I've got laundry, I've got groceries, I've got guests with suitcases. Uh, you know, sometimes we're going to go fishing, sometimes we're going to go swimming, sometimes we're just going to lay at the beach. This thing will do it all. Uh, I really like the, the fact that you can fish this way from the center bench. Two people get their own hull, their own gear. I like that you can put your bikes and the laundry in, it's going to stay dry. I like that when I get to the beach, I can just take this out, unsnap it from the back, lay it on the beach and lay on it so I don't have to lay in the sand. Uh, I think my wife likes this. She can just lay down on the boat while we're like just floating around. So it's, I'm six foot nine, so I make the bench look a little small, but from a normal person, plenty of room to lay down. Versatile, that's my third uh, favorite thing. But of course, you've got to transport a boat. If I'm on a sailboat, uh, the reason I chose a port boat was so that I could tie it to the rail of my sailboat, fold it flat and tie it to the rail. So uh, in this boat, I can undo the bolts, pull the hull off, make it flat, throw the materials, the seats, the beams, everything in the hull, close the hull with a little snap, close the other hull, tie them both against the rail one next to the other so it takes no more room than a porta boat or a paddle board now i'm a lazy sailor uh, if you're a sailor at all like me lazy is one of the key words to, in your vocabulary so i don't like to do work i don't like to do so when when it's assembled i don't want to go up on a four deck and disassemble it make it flat just for a little transit so i want to be able to tow it this boat because it's like a pair of skates with the, both hulls acting like a rudder, I can tow this boat and it's not gonna waver around. It's gonna cut through the chop. It's gonna tow very, very easily and very safely and stably. So if I don't have an arch and I don't wanna fold it up, I can just tow it. Of course, when I'm going across big water to Gulf Stream or you know, I'm gonna sail for two days, three nights, I'm gonna fold it up and put it on. However, being a lazy sailor that I am, I got tired of folding up the port boat as well. On my foredeck, I eventually got some money and I bought an arch and put an arch on the back of my boat. So if I can use, I can fasten the, the tow lines to the rings, hoist it up on the back of my arch, carry it that way just like any other dinghy. Best of all, when it's, transportability is important, but also when we get to shore, we're gonna store our boat on the hard for three to six months while we're away and during the hurricane season. A normal dinghy, you end up leaving outside tropical storm comes, it's going to blow away, the sun's going to beat on it for a whole six months in Florida. It's not, not really a good way. So what we do with our boat is we take this down, fold it flat, put it in the rental car, take it to the storage unit, in the elevator, up into the storage unit, and we have a seven and a half by 10 foot storage unit. This boat, 11 and a half feet long, fits perfectly in that unit. So I can put it away, out of the way when I'm done with it. Likewise, if, you, if you're going to take it home, you don't, have a, you don't need a slip, you don't need a trailer, you can just hang it because of, it's got handles here. We can just use the handles and hang it like a rake or a bicycle on the wall of your garage. So it's out of the way for the season. 
that's a, the, 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 the fourth thing I like. And the last thing I like is that um, it's very durable. This material is probably bulletproof. We haven't shot at it, but we've rammed this thing into the dock. The bow comes up, snaps right back out. No damage done. I can drive onto the beach, onto the rocks, onto the coral. No issues. I might get a little scratch, but I'm never going to sink the boat or cause a leakage. I come up to the dock, there's a nail sticking out or a sharp thing sticking out, no problem. I tell my wife my middle name is Careful. She laughs about that, that's absolutely not true. So a boat like this, for me, is a necessity. A rubber dinghy, if I want to call it that, or an inflatable, is rapidly going to become a deflatable with me at the helm driving onto the beach and up against the dock. So it's very nice to have something that's very solid. This is ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. If I'm buying an inflatable, I might get a life expectancy of eight to 10 years, depending on how I treat it and where I store it. Uh, and of course, it's gonna come with maybe a two year warranty. This thing here, because of the construction, it's got a 15 year warranty, but it's a 20 year investment. So it's something that when I spend my money on, I'm gonna pay a little more upfront, but it's gonna last so much longer. And it puts me in a position to use the technology of the future, the electric motor. Those five things, I'm sold. Cool. You had mentioned that this version is not ready for sale yet. What are you going to be improving? What's, what's the, the new one going to have? What's in your brain right now? Uh, well, we've got a lot of things in the brain. You know, I want to add a sailing rig because it goes through the water so easily. I've got a, a great uh, transom, a whole piece right here, a beam where I can oh, pop yeah. in a, a rig and tie it up with a, a, a few lines to the side and put a sail on it and off I go. So I think that's an addition. Some people who are more fair weather than I say they want to have a, a bimini. But you know, those are add-ons. What we really need to do with this boat, and the reason I'm not selling it yet is because it's not perfect to my standard. As I mentioned, I'm an engineer. I want it to be just right. Once those things are fixed, it's Kickstarter time or launch time and the boat will be for sale. Cool. Well, thank you very, very much. Cool. If I wanted to have an electric, this is the boat I would have it on. Yeah. You know what, uh, what I want, one thing I want to add? So I take this boat out. It's a chick magnet. <laughs> now, that, that sounds really stupid. You know, I'm an old guy. <laughs> I'm not oh. a chick magnet, but when I show it to people, it's almost inevitably the woman that really likes this boat. I really like it. And then I ask them, why do you like it? And they can't really verbalize it, but I think it's because it, it looks more stable and they don't have to sit on the edge of the rubber and get a wet butt. And I think that's what it is, but you know, it's a real chick magnet. It's, uh, it's cool. <laughs> what do you think, Emily? <laughs> I really liked it. I thought that uh, just watching Elizabeth sit on the seat and, you know, she's not bumping, you know, along as she's riding in it. She's just sort of gliding like the queen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think somebody told me it reminds uh, reminds them of a uh, gondola, a Venetian gondola. Yes. And that's very romantic. And so the women have this in their mind. They see this. It's like, oh, my man's going to be at the back kind of driving me through the harbor. <laughs> yes. It was very easy to get in and out of too. It felt very stable and like very much like a gondola, just yeah. kind of straight. I think it's got a great future. You know, we got to make some fine tweaks, and then, uh, of course, a good invention is never enough. You need to do marketing. So I, I run, I'm an entrepreneur as well, and I know very well that you can invent the best thing ever. And if you don't protect your rights and if you don't bring it to market in the right way, it's still nothing. So our, I think we got the best thing ever boat wise. Next thing we need to do is make sure we get a good marketing team behind it and get it sold. Pretty cool. Thanks for your time today. All right, thank you. Bye. Bye bye. It's like canoeing without having to paddle. Yeah, that's right. Actually, these are oars for rowing, but if you had regular canoe paddles, you could have four people just paddling this thing as well. I'm here to interview Tamas Slezak of Moveo in the hope that he'll let me have a free one of his sports cars, which are <laughs> over there. I don't think I'm going to succeed, but actually, jokes aside, this is a very exciting company involved in a whole range of electric vehicles, and I want to hear the story. So please tell us what is unique about them, and what is your plan for rolling out your business? Yes. So uh, we have developed uh, a foldable electric scooter, which is 
which has the name Moreo, yes. and it's, uh, it, it, has, it is made from carbon composite uh, lightweight body. Yes, yes. And uh, it's foldable, as you say, which yes. is un very unusual. You said that in your talk that I he heard, yes. That's right. So it's a, it's a full full size moped it's, yes. a, it's a full size uh, motorcycle which uh, which is addition which has the additional value to be foldable so yes. when you need yes. you can yes. put in your in the trunk of your car or you yes. can put uh, in a yacht or a yes. motorhome that's uh, but you should, said in your I talk show? you said yes please you said in your talk that you don't think people fold it often uh, so it's a secondary benefit, yes. but you have designed now a, a full-scale, proper scooter. Should, should I drive it? Yes, it? absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've run over a few minutes. Sounds expensive. Um, is it top of the market as a product in pricing? Uh, I think no. It's uh, it's uh, about three thousand euros. So well, it's not not not, not, high. not much higher than that. normal scooters. That's like remarkable. But we okay. and, and the cluster there that you have is that uh, um, looks very elegant design. Yes. Can you tell us about it? Yes, it's all. Uh, this is our. Uh, proper design uh, and my colleagues uh, like this rounded shape and we, we call it or, or, organic design. Yes, yes absolutely I like it, I think it's excellent. Where, where is this made? It is uh, made in Hungary, so we, we had a yes. te team of uh, more than... And you of course are Hungarian. Yes. yes, yes. We had a team of more than 10 uh, engineers, electrical and mechanical engineers. So it's, the design is totally uh, new. And uh, this side can be folded. Uh, maybe the folding I would show on the red one. So I have to take it out. So that's the folding. We can put, uh, this, put this side in for storage. Yes. Yeah. Store. Yeah. One minute about. Just, uh, just the prototypes. <laughs> and we are looking for investors to yes. begin production. So when you get the investors, I'm sure you will with a product as superb as that. You um, would dream of selling a hundred a year, a thousand a year. What, what magnitude, uh, roughly? I mean. So we we are looking for an investment of 2.5 million euros, right. which would be enough to produce. 5,000 pieces per year. Right, and the, the market would obviously stand that. I mean, Europe as a whole is yes. taking uh, so that's for Europe. two wheelers. It's taking, what, one and a half million now, maybe? Okay, can we move on to this car, which you're not going to give me? <laughs> uh, I heard a little of your talk, but the people who are watching this video don't know what I heard, so I'd like to begin at the beginning. Yes. Uh, you've done some really exciting things because you've worked with uh, 
from my country approaching with the in-wheel motors which have built-in redundancy yes. don't they they're really several motors in one motor so they're a very clever product and uh, you're doing four-wheel drive vectored steering yes that's a four-wheel drive uh, super super lightweight uh, super sports car and uh, what you told about the in-wheel motors they have a redundancy so it, it's actually two motors in one yeah so if something breaks down yeah uh, which is brilliant. Functions more. brilliant and and this is you see this as a platform don't you this isn't just one yes, body that's a functioning platform so the body is not not yet ready but uh, but the chassis as you, you will see on the next slides is, is ready and functioning uh, it has a range electric pure electric range of 100 kilometers and we we will build in a range extender made yes. made it from a and you a said one, 600, one I think 600 kilometers with the range extender yes. you add the two together would be total which is, is great and um, so what other innovation is there there as you are the um, motor controllers Yes, different the or to, the total electronic would, was made by also so we we have both uh, uh, the in wheel motors yes. we have both and also the battery yeah and, uh, and the charger but everything else is made by all uh, our uh, engineers of course team. the the, uh, the protein motor has its own controller within yes. it, doesn't yes. it? Of course, yes. I, I, they, yeah. But so you're doing uh, power, other power electronics. So it, here it, you can see the charger, and beneath is the uh, yes. battery. And yes. in the in the back would be built the range extender. And this is a plug-in vehicle. This is a plug-in electric vehicle because those are the ones that are selling really fast now, aren't they? The 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 in some countries um, the hybrids that do not plug in are dying uh, mm -hmm. but the plug-in hybrids are selling in, in some countries they've gone up 80 yes, percent in a year haven't they so right. you're following a very big wave there the, the, the real demand here you can see it's the range extender and it's and it's and that's uh, unusual in that's a bankle engine that's a bankle engine because uh, normally bankle engines light. yes ah, right. small and light it yeah. has some problems with the uh, with the uh, hammer test don't see they used to have problems with efficiency and, and with and sealant yes. sealing, uh, but they're used in unmanned aerial vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, aren't they? And there so are the, other versions that are being developed by other people who are, that are advances on the basic wrangle. So there is a future path of development. Mm -hmm. Who makes that for you? It's a German company, uh, Eichstro. 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 Yes. Yes. Eichstro. Yes. I see. Oh, that's interesting. So. Um, an advantage also would be there's much less noise vibration and so on from a rotary device right. compared with a piston engine and you can mount it in different positions more easily can't yeah. you a piston engine has to be upright usually that's right um, so it's much more versatile but this is not a drop-in get you home range extender this is a permanently fitted serious range yes. extender isn't yes. it so, so that's, that's why we we call we call, uh, we call the car not a uh, not a hybrid because yeah. it's a range extended electric vehicle Absolutely. because it can work only electric so yeah. there is no hybrid it's a, it's a serious hybrid in in that in, jargon in the, perhaps yeah. yes. um, okay that, that's wonderful so um, when to a consumer um, what do you think will be the most exciting unique when they buy it do you think the people you're going to sell to are going to be techies, nerds, who, who will know about things like in-wheel motors, or is it going to be more a case of they want the particular range or something? So uh, it will be a, it's a super car, yeah. a super sports car, which could be, uh, could be manufactured in, in a very small series, so maybe 10, 20 or 30 pieces. So it would be, every car would be personalized. Yeah. And there is uh, no other supercar which is range extended electric. So there are supercars yeah. made hybrid, which yeah. has big motors, big engines. Three usually, yes. yes. Yeah. Huge engines with yeah. huge, uh, huge uh, but, but power. This, but, but there's no, no supercar which is uh, electric and uh, with a small range extender. Yeah. And because we, uh, we have this range extender, if we put in a uh, bigger gasoline tank now it's only 600 only 600 kilometers range but if we put in a little bit bigger gasoline tank it can be thousand kilometer range and there is I think there are no 
other uh, sports cars, electric sports cars, that, that would have so long range. So I think that's a, that's a that point. Maybe the nearest is the BMW i8, which is also a two-seater and also a series hybrid, and it's a piston engine, it's a three-cylinder three yeah. piston engine, yes. but it has a somewhat similar specification, does it? Uh, yes, but the acceleration of B BMW e E8 is maybe above five five seconds. Yes. So and even, even the Tesla has better acceleration than the BMW. I and, and what is your acceleration? 3.2. I see. I it's see. a thousand newton meter per. Yeah, yeah. Wheel. Yeah. And with vectored steering and yeah. four-wheel drive, it will have an incredible It's totally other. Yeah. Not it road, <laughs> and snow, ice. Great. Okay, well, um, I'm sorry I didn't persuade you to let me have one, because I know you're going to be very successful. You're brilliant. Uh, no, I don't want to pay... <laughs> I, I, uh, I think if, I think if you if, if you find for us an uh, investor for, <laughs> okay. for, for producing no, that small wonderful. cities, then the first There we are. He's a businessman all the really? way. That's wonderful. No, seriously, <laughs> jokes aside, but, uh, that's it's wonderful. It's not a joke. I, how, much I money, how much money do you want to raise, uh, by so the way? We, we would uh, raise uh, 5.8 million euros. Uh, euros for the yeah. for this that super sounds car sensible, project doesn't it? Yeah, and 2.5 for the scooter on the basis of that you will be selling products yes yeah. yeah oh good luck i think it's wonderful to see the engineering <laughs> around europe and uh, it's it's uh, not all in germany <laughs> so it said european countries have superb complementary skills and it's marvelous to see thank you very thank much you. marvelous <laughs>
To get Quiggle started, we need your help. Please back us and you will be the first benefiting from Quiggle. What's up guys, Nolan Ninja Warring Aviators and Superman have bringing you yet another episode of the combat logs or weapon logs I should say, not combat logs, weapon logs here on the Modern Ninja Channel. This time we're going to go over one of my newest purchases, the uh, extendable staff. So let's get into it. Alright, so uh, the extendable staff is actually really cool. There's a couple good benefits to it, a couple good negatives to it, and I'm going to go over both. But first, I, I want to show you how to open this. Now, this is kind of dangerous because it's made of thin metal, and so when it shoots out, it's kind of sharp. But something you're going to realize is there's two parts to this. There's 
the knob right here, this is basically the button you push to unlock it, and the pin here on a spring right there. Now, I'm gonna show the camera just like that. Now there's a spring and a pin. Now that pin has to be pulled in order for you to pull it out. But you don't pull it like a grenade, you don't pull the pin. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take it in two fingers, you're going to push this knob right here until you hear the click of the pin coming loose, just like that. Now once that pin has come loose, that is when it's okay to let go. What you're gonna do is you're going to let go with your hand and wait for it to open and then you're going to grab it. It's almost instant, just like this. Just like that. So as you can see, it opened up all the way. Occasionally it will open up uh, slightly messed up and all you have to do is just rewrap it and it's just fine. But this is a, not a bad staff. Now, a couple things are uh, to note is that it's not perfectly weighted. The, the center of the bow staff is just to the right of it, barely. And that may not sound like a lot. If you're doing tricks and the stuff that I like to do with it, that's gonna be something to take note of because doing the tricks when it's slightly off weighted makes you have to re, you know, compensate for the entire thing. So doing hard tricks is near impossible doing easy tricks just takes a little more concentration so that is something to uh, keep in mind now how to close it a lot of people don't realize how to close it so all you're going to do you're going to take your hand at the top where the uh, rotate is and you're going to twist your right hand underneath it now it's only a couple inches at a time i'm not trying to do feet at a time and i'm just rotating it right hand clockwise or counterclockwise as i push it down just like this all the way until you get whoop, to the bottom, I know this is gonna be kind of bumpy, I hope I don't knock my phone down. Just like that, keeping your hand or your thumb on top just so it can stay even. Now, once you get it down, you're going to push that pin back over top, just like that, and that's how you get it down um, to its small state. And again, you might have some, you know, it be set off, you can just push it together. And again, make sure you're safe with it because it will cut you if you're not careful because it's it's a thin metal, it's a thin metal um, sheet. So it will cut you. That is the biggest thing you want to keep beware of. But other than that, it's a really cool um, toy. It's a really cool weapon. I don't want to call it a weapon because it's not going to actually help you in a fight. It bends and breaks too easily. But as far as doing tricks and showing off for your friends, this is definitely something cool to get. Uh, whether it's showing off for your friends, doing magic tricks, or even just kind of needing something to be able to do tricks randomly even if you're on a trip so let's say i was driving home i saw a cool spot i can just bang pop this thing open and be ready to trick anytime i wanted to so definitely something to look forward to definitely something to look into if you like this kind of stuff I hope you guys like this video and if you want to see more weapon logs definitely let me know down in the comments and hit a like on this video so that i know you guys liked it until next time my name's DJ Moore, this is the Modern Ninja, and I'm out.